And then he loses a leg, and it's like... And that was just insult to injury. The dude was already the old doctor. And they're like, yeah, you need to lose a leg. Like, we don't need Daryl to be a pirate. You're going to be the pirate. And then, then he loses his head, which I don't think... He, you don't come back from that. You know, like... I, And welcome to another episode of Defeated by Delicious Fruit Pies. I am NED TJ on DVDFP, and I am joined with another guest. This is a long term listener, and actually, he was on for a while before he was in our beginning stages of the YouTube channels. This is Colin. Hi. I'm me. Yeah, he's, I mean, that's all the credentials and qualifications he needs because obviously he knows what he's talking about. So, we have a great docket for you guys today. We are going to talk about a lot of things that we like to do, which is complain, and then we may say something positive towards the end. So, maybe. yeah, maybe, I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I, I don't know, it's kind of backhandedly positive. Yeah. And just, I just want to clear this up now, even though this is going to be at the end, but we will be not discussing, but simply saying AI. So just so you know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to talk about, as we approach the Halloween season, we were discussing this before today in the car, uh, the Walking Dead is one of these perfect examples. We'll, we'll, we're going to zoom in on Walking Dead, but then we'll talk about how this affects the larger horror genre and, and why it all is terrible today. Uh, but speaking specifically to the Walking Dead, the the basic consensus that we were getting was that nobody watches it anymore. Yeah. I didn't even I did not know that it was still on. I didn't think that it was a show that was still running. Um, but I guess it's kind of an undead show at this point. I just learned that Rick died like a week ago. Yeah, so spoilers, just in case you care. You don't oh, yeah, care. Pardon me. Yeah, but you don't care. So you're not watching the show, and if you are watching the show, you already know this. So it's kind of like a catch twenty two. We're gonna out you as somebody who hasn't watched the show by you complaining that that's a spoiler. So you don't care either, don't pretend. So Rick's dead, and that's really stupid. Like, that actually makes no sense for, you know, a number of reasons. Namely, that the show basically could have been called the Rick Grimes show, not the Walking Dead. Rick. Just Rick Tatorship, or Super Rick, or something like that. Like, it just, you know, it really doesn't make any sense. So Rick's dead. That's too bad. I mean, it, it, My it's rip a to Rick. I guess rick a but I mean, what? So what do you think? Like, where did you think it went wrong? We kind of talked about this a little bit before, but like, when do you think the show kind of came to a grinding halt after the governor died? Why? Why the governor? Because I, I agree. I mean, I love the governor, but why the governor? Why? And I guess more, what happened afterward that was so bad? Terminus. Because terminus is so bad. Like, like you said, after the governor, you shouldn't trust anybody, and then they just got. Fooled by a stupid signs everywhere saying this was a like safe place for everybody. So then they just went there and more uh, that one dude got eaten. <laughs> I mean that's it's not funny, but it is it's funny how stupid it was that he got at R rules in life. Don't get eaten. Don't get at. Don't you know, don't die. That's that's usually don't die. Don't get died. We don't want to have to say rip to you. No F in chat for that. Yeah, so and, and this was really my major complaint, right? was the trust factor of, like, it's signs in a map. It's signs in a map. And they had, they had scouts, like, for everything before that, right? Like, even when they were in the prison, they had people going around the perimeter. They, they didn't trust people. Zombies around. Yeah, they, they were, like, slicing up zombies and just generally keeping a good, wide distance between themselves and danger. And then they're just beelining it to this, like, train station. And they're just cool, like, yeah, yeah, of course, we're going to bury our guns out here, yeah. we're going to just walk in with no problem, it'll all turn out fine, what could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah, that, it was... Anything is possible. And, and it did some things right, like, I will say, like, The Walking Dead did some things right before that, like, it handled... Or it did four things right. <laughs> no, but it, it, did, it did handle some things, like... It handled the first season perfectly well, like that. And and when they when they re did the first episode in black and white, that was awesome. Yeah, that was like, they did a really nice job with that. So some of the directing was amazing, was excellent in that first chat, uh, the first season. But the second season, I even had problems with. And, and I know, like a lot of people don't think about the second season being where it all fell apart. Yeah. But and I said this to you earlier, Terminus never would have happened 
if Shane didn't die. There is no way Shane lets them walk into a train station. He died because you could say Carl correctly. Yeah, this is our th our running theory right now is that if you say Coral, you live for at least six, seven years. But if you say Carl, you die. You die. You die. I mean, like, look, his mother and him? Shane and, you know, I guess Rick probably even said his name right at the end. That's really what did him in. Well, I mean, didn't, didn't Carl die? Didn't he get bit? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I, <laughs> just, I really hope so. Because think about this kid's life, right? So everybody he knows gets killed or he kills. And then he's just like, okay, kid, you have one eye and you've been shot in the chest and your mother <laughs> shot your mother to death and your dad died and you're an orphan in the zombie apocalypse. But good luck. Like, call it. You're, you're going to be in great shape. That's awesome. Yeah. I was excited for him. No, if he didn't die, I mean, that, was a, that would be a mercy kill. If they killed Coral. I think they killed him before Rick, though. Oh, well then why was Rick alive? <laughs> like, what is the point of Rick? I, I don't even understand. Like, he was only really doing that to protect the original group he had, and the only person from the beginning was Carl. Everybody else was, like, extras. There's just a bunch of extras. Or, like, Laurie and Shane. That's all they do. Right, but they died. Yeah, they're dead. He killed one of them. His son killed the other. <laughs> this is, like, you know, and, and cool. Like, that would be, from just how it sounds, it sounds like an excellent story. But really, <laughs> in its execution, it was sadly very uneventful and boring. Yeah. I mean, when Carl gets shot in the woods the first time, oh, okay. it was like a great season finale. Like, you just, you didn't see it coming. There's this beautiful deer. It's this awesome moment. It's very Bad peaceful. Shoots him in the chest. Yeah, and then he gets shot in the chest because apparently Carl's look like deer. <laughs> so, you know, sucks to be him and looking like that. But... So he get, but it was a great finale. But it took all season to see anything like that mattered. Like it just was so long. It took so long for anything to happen. Like especially like Herschel being at the farm. That took what like eighteen episodes. And then he loses a leg. And it's like and that was just insult to injury. The dude was already the old doctor. They're like, yeah, you need to lose a leg. Like. We don't need Daryl to be a pirate. You're going to be the pirate. And then, then he loses his head, which I don't think he, you don't come back from that. You know, like, you could have, like, kept the head. You can't make a peg head. That's just really a sad. It's very can. unfortunate for him. Yeah. Well, this goes under the other theory of the show. So the show is not really about horror. It's really about how anybody who follows Rick Grimes dies. Like, that's really, yeah. that moral of that story is don't be friends with Rick because you'll die. Everybody in the hospital when he was in there died. Because they were just near him. <laughs> he's, he's just, he's this like typhoid Mary. Everybody dies around him. Like, how does he live? They pulled the same thing they did in 28 Days Later. He wakes up in the hospital yeah. and he's like, <coughs> I'm dehydrated. Like, dude, you're so dead. If there's no staff for days later, you're dead. Before. Yeah, like, and then they just closed the door. They didn't barricade it. Yeah, and he was, no zombies even looked in that door for fresh meat that wasn't moving. Like, he was like buffet for like days, but that's cool. So they managed to close up all the doors in the hospital with all the zombies, leave this dude, and then what, take off in a helicopter that blew up? Like, yep. everybody around Rick that dies. That right walking around. Like and the horse dies. <laughs> because the touch Rick. Because he, Rick rode the horse right into a whole, like, huge horde of zombies, and the horse gets eaten while he hides under a tank, where he meets Glenn, who also dies, because he met Rick. Everybody who touches Rick dies. Yep. Cool. So Carl, Carl. Oh, you can't. I can't even say that right now because I just did that song earlier. So um, this, I want to speak to the larger horror genre, though, in general, because The Walking Dead for the first three years was the best or only horror show. I mean, I when did American Horror Story come out? Oh, probably around the same time. And that only had like three good seasons. Yeah. I, I haven't watched it. So. I mean, admittedly, the first season's pretty good, but a lot of it is very boring. Like a lot of American Horror Stories, like this, like they're really trying hard, or like you have to really care about that that period, and then it's just if you don't care about the period, it's really boring. Like it's just, man, can we get to the? Because it doesn't. You're stuck. Like if we're doing this, you're stuck in this genre. Like. They would do an entire piece of a haunted house, and it's like an entire thing is like carnival, and it's like you can't get out of it until the next season. So you basically just stop watching it. 
It's bad. It, but I mean, again, it tried. The Walking Dead tried, at least. You know, but we haven't I don't think had. It does no. God. Hasn't tried forever. You'd have been better off with taking like survival of the dead and making a, a series, like a show about it. Then I mean, this is really bad. Like this, where we are with horror right now is Walking Dead. I think still American Horror Story. I think still. I mean, what else is there on TV? We lost Bruce Campbell versus the Evil Dead. Yeah. X Files season eleven and twelve. I think is. It. They didn't make a 13. There's no more monster shows. There's not like uh, Unsolved Mysteries anymore that was interesting. There's not any more shows like about like Millennium. Which oh, was Ghost Adventures. That's the scariest show I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. We should scrap this whole segment because that totally trumps everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was Zach Baby. <laughs> For some reason, that always reminds me of Bilbo Baggins, yeah, and yeah. he's like totally the same. Yeah. <laughs> His glasses are bigger than mine. He's like, <laughs> he's like, guys, what was that? Yeah, like, do you hear that? You hear that? Oh my gosh, guys, it's haunted. It's all, my office is more haunted than any place that they have been in at, at all. I mean, it's really bad. I would, and I talked about this. So my idea, here. this yeah, this door actually opens by itself. No, yeah, it's very nice. Like two, three times a month. Just trying to air out the, the office, I guess. It's trying to say something about me. So here's my idea for a show with ghost hunters: is it's it's supposed to catch these frauds by like setting up the whole thing, but it's like a brand new house, but it's made to look distressed and old. And and you plant little pieces of fake evidence of like like an old family photo or like an old watch or something like this. And then you watch them make fools of themselves like for hours, like all night. You just have them make up all these stories. You're like really. Really? And then like you let them know this is a replica, this is a fake, this is a fake place. We put this modular up yesterday. Nobody lived here. It was AI. It was AI. But yeah, so that's my idea for a show. But horror, like I want to talk about the, the genre too for movies, because you've seen the scary stories of Tom the Dark movie. Yeah. We both saw the latest Halloween movie. And there was another horror movie I think you saw recently. Oh, no, it was me. It was Toy Story 4. You saw that? Yeah. Oh, God. It's a horror movie, dude. There's some really creepy dolls in there. Ew. Yeah. So, but the, the horror movie genre is struggling, I think. You know, like, Halloween was extremely successful. It made millions and millions and millions of dollars. Because, yeah. but it lived off a of brand. Like, let's be real. It, it basically took Halloween 2, copied it almost point by point, and made a really decent version of a movie that was made in the late 70s, early 80s. But it was really good. It was a great movie. I mean, it was, it was really well done. I'm looking forward to the next one. I was really happy to see them bring back Jamie Lee Curtis. She is an amazing, like, heavy-duty actress. She really brought a lot of gravitas to that. But, aside from the gravy, um, it's just, it's Nike. It was Apple. Like, you knew what you were going to get into. It's yeah. the only reason why anybody watched it. Now, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, same thing. Yeah, the book. It's the books. And, and I went to Barnes & Noble for the last three, four months. They've been reselling the series, like in hardcover, softcover, and it's like, now a movie, like, oh, new, so we get this new audience. Nobody knew who was watching the movie. Like, you had to know the books before you watched the movie. So it's mostly people from my generation because we just grew up watching that crap. But, again, a decent movie. Yeah. But the problem is there are no new IPs. There's no, yeah. like, even, like, so It 2 is coming out. I just saw, we saw that right yeah. before we were starting this episode. It 2. It 2? Like, you had It was a remake already of a movie that was based on a book. Like, it it too. oh, God. Nosferu 2. Or <laughs> Frankenstein 3. Like, it's really bad. I mean, like, this is, this is getting to the point where you are actually going to have, like, the 13th, 14th movie in a series. Like, it's just, it's like Jason movies. There's like 11 of them. And if you count the remake, there's there's 12. Like, that is an obscene, uh, obscene amount of movies. Obscene. It's an obscene. It's, it's a mix of obscene and insane. But like, there's nothing new. What has been new in the horror genre in the last 10 years? Annabelle was another doll movie. Okay. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> And, and you have all these movies that are like, either it's a possessed doll, ghosts and dreams, 
Oh yeah, I saw the new Chucky. That's what I. Did. Oh, how was that? <laughs> I expected so much from that. Movie. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was Chucky, but it wasn't Chucky. You know what the difference is? The old Chucky was just a string pulled doll. And now this one's like an AI. AI. <laughs> That's exactly it. It's AI. <laughs> Neil Breen was right. Nailed it, Neil Breen. You nailed it. He's smart. So let's let's switch over to the music scene. I want to talk about music. Uh, I think that you know we beat horror to death. You know, you know, because it's horror. <laughs> wow. Beat it. Shut up. <laughs> So, you went to go see a couple of really awesome concerts this summer. What did you watch? Um, the singer from Queensryche um, broke off, Jeff Tate, and he started his own thing, Operation Minecraft. He just plays a whole lot Operation Minecraft now. Um, I went to see the Twins of Evil tours, and I'll be in uh, Manson, which was awesome. That was my favorite that I went to. That's and uh, Iron Maiden, like a week ago. And so, like, you named, I mean, aside from the first thing that you were talking about, everybody that you mentioned, they were doing tours and they were famous when I was yeah, in. Yeah, well, Queens of was around the same time as uh, Maiden. So. Yeah. So you're talking, in the last 25 years, has there been a new band or a new group that has been like, wow, like they're amazing and I'm going to watch them for like the next 20 years. The last ones, I feel like, were like Corn and Deftones and you know, like that. Perfect Circle, Tool, yeah. like, yeah, like, like we said, Deftones before. Like the 90s was the end. That was it. Bramstein, that was it. And now they're just making new albums until they die out. And then there's going to be nothing left. So while I think that doesn't really impact us in the age of just downloading whatever, I mean, I could go on the computer, we could download yeah. the complete anthology of, of Manson, right? Yeah, I already did that. Right, but, you, so, but I could too, and, and by the way, in, in 10 years, another kid could too. Yeah. And that part's fine. There is this great music that lives on forever. Yeah. And, and in every format, John, I mean, I have a record player right there. I have like, multiple black set of records that are new, still vinyls that I can, I can listen to. But there's no, I don't think, I, there's no end game for like 20 years from now, 25 years from now, there being concerts for rock or metal. No. Unless it's like a tribute band, like the Pink yeah. Floyd tribute band or like Led Zeppelin's tribute band. You know, I, I, so what do, you, what do you think is going on? What's wrong? Why aren't we getting new blood making awesome, new, crazy, talented music and rock? The new freaking pop music, the... Hey, yeah, you know, so... What do you mean? That's excellent music. So well written. Yeah, I mean, because it was written. It was written by somebody, but not them. <laughs> not them. So what, but what does that mean? So why not, as a 16-year-old, 18-year-old, make a new band and do something unique and new? and Because no one listens to that, except, like, the few people that listen to it. So you think part of the problem is that it's not enough young people even listening to the genre? Yeah. Like, how many people that are in your age category, even, like, a couple grades ahead? I only people? know, like, three people. Total? Yeah. In your school? Not my school, like, like I have total? Yeah. Wow. Well, that off the top of my head, so. That would be a big problem. Yeah. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Well, like, I gotta say, I don't really know a whole lot of people who are trying to rap or sing Katy Perry in your age category either. And nobody in my age category is trying to do that, that I know of. I hope not. Or else it would be like a horror movie and I wouldn't know them very long. Um, but that's, yeah, that's interesting. That's actually, it's an interesting take. Because what I was thinking was, you know, even the kind of rock, that, the lighter rock, that isn't like soft rock, but lighter rock, not metal, but like we were talking about, either like Soundgarden or Chili Peppers or Obviously. Audio Slave, well, that later on, yeah. Uh, but like Rage Against the Machine, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. Right? There hasn't been anything like Rage. And, you know, but even like CCR or... Uh, STP, like all these bands that were great, but they were very, like much more easy listening to. Yeah. You can understand the lyrics, like they were singing. The, it was more poetry that they moved to music. Yeah. I don't see any new bands like that either. No. Like, and for a while in like the early 2000s, the alternative scene started to pick that up because like 
you had uh, Billy Corgan kind of went off on his own. He was thinking yeah. a lot of people are copying him, like Silver Sun pickups and people like that. And you had Keen, and you had all these different like alternatives. They were trying things out. But then what the alternative scene turned into almost exclusively was like folk. Yeah. It just all turned into folk. It, w- it was like Little Lion Man. Like every song was, was the same. And it's, it's all the same. Like I'm, I hear the flannel in my ears and the beard. Oh. My beard grows listening to, to Huron, Lake Huron. It's like I, I just can't. The Decemberists actually make my voice falsetto at, like when I'm talking to people, it's ruining my, my body. Just yeah. very, it's still torturous. But it's not that the alternative scene's gone for originality. It it has become mainstream. So there's no real alternative scene. There's no real rock scene. There's no garage bands anymore, like kicking a couple of PVs over and like playing some like mm-hmm. you know, just fender guitar with distortion and making new songs. And and my theory on that is that it's not just that there's not kids listening to it, because I think a lot of people in your age category all the way up to like even like 19 20 21 i think they're listening to rock like 90s rock 80s rock 70s rock i think that they're afraid to try to do anything that isn't current yeah, exactly. and it kind of goes back to i don't know if you saw the episode that i did it was like three or four weeks ago on don't be too jaded and what i so what i talked about in that was that the problem that i see with most people today is that nobody wants to take a risk. They don't want to be different. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to stand out. Nobody wants to be unique. So you don't give a shit, so. Well, that's fine. You yeah. don't, yeah. right? But like, you're, obviously you also listen to like Slipknot and like all these bands that most people in your age category don't yeah. listen to. But what I'm saying is, I think at large, in general, a lot of people are not really, they're scared to be excellent at something and get excited about something and care about something so much that they, they're they okay being bad at it and they're okay being made fun of for it. They just want to be as, as good as they can at that thing. Like, I really think that's a big issue. Like, it, it's almost like, and, and I've said this in, in a couple episodes ago, I want to bring back an insult for people who are boring and don't want to, like, try hard at something. Like, it used to be called a square. So you used to call somebody, like, yeah. in, like, the 1920s, you know, like, oh, don't be a square, come out bowling with us. <laughs> no, no, we don't have any of that. <laughs> oh, man. Where's where's our comedians? Where are all the comedians? Richard Pryor, man. We need another Richard Pryor in our lives to just warm our hearts. Yeah. Maybe the cockles of our hearts. Maybe the subcockles. Maybe in the kidneys. Maybe People are afraid they'll be criticized. Yes, exactly. That is absolutely true. They are afraid that they're going to be... And people are afraid... Here are the specific insults. And tell me if this still happens to you. Uh, people are called hardo. They're called tryhards. They're called extra. Like, these are all words that are designed to make you feel bad about being, like, really excited about something. Like, I don't understand that. Like, do you guys have, like, insults like that in your school for people who are, like, really into something? What's the cat, retard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see that that word came back. Oh, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, he's in my class. That's yeah, I could see that. But that's aside from that, I think that these insults that are specific to people who care a lot, I think it says a lot about the generation. It says a lot about the culture. So, you know, while you're, you know, you understand, you like stuff that maybe other people don't like. Like I'm sure you go, you know, walking around with shirts like this, and people are like, "Who is that? Like, what do you? What is that? It's weird. That's like yeah. freaking me out." Like. That's hilarious, right? I mean, that's yeah, funny for you, but there's people who are not secure in themselves and they get freaked out because it's like, oh, oh don't look at me. Yeah. I don't want to stand out. Like, I want to have as blank a shirt as possible. Like, I'm just going to yeah. cover my, my chest here. And <laughs> like, it's, it's just that bad. It really, I, and I, so I think that's a big part of this problem. What do you think that we can do then? I mean, aside from call people square when they don't do like what, something new or something like that. <laughs> and, and not calling people the hard R on, you know, in public school. What is the, uh, what do you think there's something we can do to help? Like, for people who are listening to this or watching this uh, later on, like, you know, that are in school or whatever like that, like, what, what do you think a suggestion would be to get people out there to try if they think they have the music talent? People will judge you, but they're too afraid to actually do anything. So, if you're judged, nothing really is going to happen to you. That's true. That's a good point. Because people are, I mean, yeah, nobody's going to put their money where their mouth is either on judging you. What are they going to do? Like, fight you? Like, <laughs> they don't want to look gonna like... It's going to be like some style, like, ew, look at that. They're like, 
I'm gonna sue you for making me uncomfortable because I said you were stupid and then you said fight me. <laughs> square. <laughs> nah, you're square. So, all right. So let's let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about Neil Breen. I want to get right to Neil Breen. Let's do it. Let's talk oh, about Neil Breen. Jesus. So for those of you, I want to give a brief introduction because apparently not everybody knows who Neil Breen is, and that's, that's a problem. Yeah, that that is a major problem, problem for you all out there. Neil Breen is just a normal guy. I mean, he's not normal. No, 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 no. Let me rewind. Neil Breen is a producer, director, writer, editor, and main star of all of his Money movies. Wanderer. Money Wanderer Extraordinaire. Of terrible, like, terrible movies. Great movies. Excellent, legitimate, feature-length movies. <laughs> so... He makes these movies where he narrates over them. They're all single shot camera angles. Like it would be like this this camera. Yeah. It would be like this looking at us. This is the whole scene. And then sometimes there's a dude behind there just spinning it. Yeah, time. yeah. It'll, it might turn his his one filmographer might like just move it a little bit. And then like even though we're talking, like we would narrate above our conversation. Yeah. So too. like there would be a conversation. But there would be no audio here, and just be him narrating. Yeah, or we would like we would move into the scene, and like so in the beginning, I'd be like, "All right, Colin, are you ready to do this episode?" And then like we would just look at each other and not say anything for like an awkward minute, just like sit there. Yeah. And then maybe there'd be some narration after. I mean, this this stuff. But there'd be like a terrible green screen, but there's no like original. Oh, yeah, like really, really low resolution green screen, like a building behind it, but you can see like the blurry lines for it. It's, and it's, you can see like the green around it. Like, yeah, it's thick. It's it's really bad. So he makes these movies obviously to launder money because I looked at the credits and I I made this prediction like it was going through like the lighting and the catering and all these other things and I was like. I bet you these are all Neil like, Green. There, so there was like an N and a B. And yeah, and I was like Neil like, Green. It was like N and B, and we were just like Neil Neil Green. Yeah, and Neil Neil Green. And then Green. at the end, at the end, it was like for all the N and the and the Bs and the and the credits is like for Neil. These are all Neil Green. Yeah, these are all Neil Green products or something. It was it was so ridiculous. I could not believe I predicted it that accurately. That it was like. He legitimately is just fronting his own, all of his own stuff, and he's laundering all of his money for his own vendors that he's selling back to. Like, I don't know what his game is, but... And then the entire movie in this last one was filmed on the set of a college campus, like in the computer lab in the hallway. Like, all of the movie. Well, like, and then in someone's house. Yeah. And then there were explosions. The same exact explosion Every from Adobe. Time. Over and over and over again. I mean, like, it... it this is stuff that would have been cringy looking in like 2005. No, or like, like my, I had a Spider-Man cartoon maker in like 1996 or 97, where I could make smoother looking movies and special effects and better explosions and sounds than in his movie. And when he shot something, you know the little fire emoji. <laughs> So whenever he shot, it made a terrible gun sound effect and the fire emoji appeared at the end of the gun. And there's no hole. Bullying is now accepted. Bullying is a serious problem. Yes. And yes. That might be, uh, I might have read that a little late, but. Yeah, that's a little late. It's okay. Because Neil Breen talks about this too. Kind of. In his um, really broad, generalized way of not really talking about anything in a coherent manner. It's... I mean, it was so bad. So anyway, so that's that's a background on Neil Breen. I just wanted to just get you up to speed. Look up Neil Breen movies. There's lots of memes. There's lots of YouTube videos. N e i l b r e e n. Yeah, Breen. Breen. <laughs> it sounds like a cereal. Like it sounds like a cereal brand, killer. An off-brand like dollar store cereal. <laughs> Breen. <laughs> like it's got, like General Mills. Breen. Breen is like. It's got all the Kellogg cereals, but they're yeah, all just plastic green. bags. And they're just like green on them, and they don't even. There's no name. There's no animal. There's no green. artwork. Just green. And then you can get the green Long that has the white like. puffs. Green that has the flakes. You can get green that has the colored stuff. Green with cinnamon, chocolate, C green. cinnamon toast, green. Like he <laughs> should be. Green. I want an action figure of Neil Green, and I'm sure he does too. Oh but he is, uh, so he's coming out with a sixth movie. He just came out with his latest movie, which really came out at the beginning of 2019. And we watched that. Yeah, that we got that yesterday. gem yesterday. And uh, what he promises is he will make a behind the scenes. Promise. 
prom- it's already done. By the end of this, he was gonna. It's done. It's coming out. Yeah, he said it's coming out at the end of the year, but it's Probably done. like a month. Yeah. So like maybe next year, but he's, he says that it's done <laughs> and it's going to be all how to make a great movie. He's, I mean, he told us he's never been to film school. But he has a thing to teach us, even if we have. He so said even, even if you have went to film school, you might learn something today. There might be something in it for everyone. And so we're, we're really looking forward to that, and also the sixth movie. But we had some ideas, because we also watched another movie that was very surprising in who made that. Um, oh, Bad Taste. Bad Taste was not only what it was, but it was also us for picking that movie. Bad, <laughs> yeah. Bad Taste was really bad. I saw it featured on, um, what was it, like, Voodoo, Amazon, was, something like that? Oh, uh, it's like it's like a voodoo, but it's like Voody or Zoomy. Oh, yes, yeah, Zoomy. Zoomy, like, yeah. it's some awful movie app that's like crackle and uh it it was like one of these movies from new zealand so we had to put on subtitles because obviously you guys speak like a different language and that was thankful and we, yeah. we noticed like this guy is doing these lines and it it's peter jackson peter jackson wrote directed produced with his mother and father yeah his mom and dad and he was two different characters in the movie that looked completely different, like really weirdly one different. One looked like Charles Manson, except the little, you know, yeah. handle of weight. And then one looked like a skinny, weird, like... Dorky, dorky Harry Potter looking guy. That was Derek. Derek? Derek! Who had the... Poor Derek. The Gryffindor scarf, even and though... he had Harry Potter glasses. He had Harry Potter glasses, but it was made in the 80s. Like, it made no sense that he, he predicted the future of Harry Potter when he was the Lord of the Rings guy. So... It was awful, but it was really funny, and it wasn't nearly as crass and nasty as Me, the Feebles, which was his second movie. What we decided was that Peter Jackson should co-produce and direct Neil Breen's sixth movie in his first collaborative enterprise. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could maybe be the seventh. Maybe, yeah, maybe the seventh. We should leave Neil for this for yeah. number six. But yeah, the seventh movie could be something like Worst Taste, like. You can't watch this better movie. Taste. Better taste. <laughs> yeah, it, maybe it can't get worse. If Peter Jackson will just make it better. No, I don't. I think it can get a lot worse. If Neil Breen is there. So you think Neil Breen would pull Peter Jackson down? You don't think Peter Jackson would bring Neil Breen up? There's no meeting halfway. What if he had Muppets? Well, no, that's a different story. I think if he brings Muppets to the table, and he and imagine he convinces... Neil Breen with the Muppet. It'd be like him being behind him. It would be like him with that eagle where he's like looking at the log and Yeah, he, he, say this is the eagle, he's like, thank you. And he's thanking a log. Thank you. And, and it's a, so it's a green screen eagle in the foreground. He's like it's supposed like to be looking at the eagle. Rat. Yeah, and meanwhile, this eagle is like devastating this poor animal. <laughs> and Neil Breach is like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. To the log that the hawk You're the a traitor. <laughs> you betrayed us. You betrayed me. You betrayed us. <laughs> so, you betrayed me. You betrayed us. Peter Jackson convinces Neil Breen to stop at the green screens and do everything like in real life with real scenery. Gets him out into the desert. Uses like animatronics and Muppets. That's half Neil Breen's problem right there. I think it improves the quality of the movie. Yeah, but I think he's still... I think after like... After everybody thinks it's done, Neil Breen's going to go back and edit... Oh, he'll edit it in Adobe and he'll ruin everything. Well, how about, though, Neil Breen voice acts every Muppet? That would be amazing. That would be the, in fact, the entire movie's Muppets voiced by Neil Breen. Except there's only, like, three different ones. Like, there's only, like, the cast and... What was it called? Like, twin, like... The boys? No, no, like, twin... The, the Neil Breen movie, we just... Oh, oh, uh, twin... something. I don't, I don't yeah. want to remember. But, like... There was only like the cat. There was only ten people in the cast. So maybe, like, yeah, maybe, maybe not even like ten people. And there was like so he chained up three people in the basement. Don't ask. And um, <laughs> you have to watch it yeah. to see what happens. And um, he's like rot, like the rest. You're like what rest? <laughs> the same, the same three people just fade to existence. Like in like twenty different positions, like it's the same three guys over and over and over. There's like a billion of them, and it makes no sense for the rest of the movie because they don't actually sit and rot. They, oh, they, they he shoots them at the end. You'll you'll all die soon. I'm like, whoa, dude! Like this got dark. 
But I think Neil Breen narrating or, or voice acting for Muppets would be the ultimate movie. I, I just think. Well, then there's going to be those awkward pauses in slow motion. I don't, he probably can't even move his hand. Or when he loops it accidentally over and over again. <laughs> Somebody, like, so he says something, no, 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 <laughs> because that's how he do, that's how Neil Breen do, and this is why what we really need for Neil Breen to direct and produce and it, film all the movies. It's a new movie, it's a prequel called AI. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I think we really should end up with for the, for the Neil Breen section here. Um, let's see if we have anything else in the comment section please uh, shoot anything over that you have right now we are just about at the end of this I do want to go over a couple of things that I had emailed to us between last week and this week and, uh, and then we'll call it a day so I, you know just email is a part of AI you can't spell email without a I oh shit that's true DBDFP yeah, yeah. double down down AI. down down I've been <laughs> integrated I'm integrated with AI and I've fully accepted these powers Neil Breen's AI. So I had a, I had a question come up of uh, when are we going to do another Nicolas Cage match? So, like three years ago ish, we did this whole Nicolas Cage series where we watched as a as a team because none of us could do it by ourselves. We watched every Nicolas Cage Aww. movie ever made and then commented on it in a series of of podcasts. Mm. There have since been like almost a dozen new Nicolas Cage movies. Now I've watched most of them. And so here, here's what I will say. For anybody who wants another Nicolas Cage match, oh, hi, Colin. So you're already getting, you're getting, you have more shout outs than I've had in the last four episodes by name. You suck. I, I do. I do. Suck. So it's Colin's going to be, be taking over the podcast, and I'll be guesting uh, sometimes, guest hosting. Yeah. But the, so what I will say is, I am willing to watch the rest of the Nicolas Cage movies that I have not seen yet if. You all as an audience, not me, I'm not doing this. If you all as an audience email and, you know, send on Twitter, send on Instagram, just bother his people. I don't know how many people he has left or he can afford, but get his people, reach out to them and say that he's being invited officially to a podcast where we essentially have dedicated whole episodes to just him. He can listen to the other episodes. There's no, you know, jump scares here for him. I'm not trying to do gotcha moments. I, I would love to have Nicolas Cage on, and I will I will watch those movies. I will bite that bullet, but I'm not doing the work for that. So you're gonna have to try to get him on. I'm just I'm not I can't I don't have no time to try to chase down celebrities. We need, we need him on. And then it would just be a tragedy. I know. Endless tragedy. I, know. I so I wouldn't allow Neil Breen on here, even if he was even if he asked. I I would. And this is why I'm actually going to host the show. No, but we need him on here. We don't. <laughs> we do. We, we have we AI. Do. We don't need him. We're not, he is AI. He's a humanoid being. What if he's not real? Oh, hey, I got a high Eric. <laughs> yeah, but I still got one shot on. You have the same. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so I will, I'll work on that. I'll do the Nicolas Cage thing again. It's just, it's a lot. Uh, and another email of thanks for uh, making it was so this was a guy who sent me an email and was saying thank you for talking about fall he hates the heat he's really happy that it upset his girlfriend and so for you guys like Tom and Jessica thanks for watching and listening and I'm happy to see that I can make one of you happy and, and make the other one mad maybe that even evens out maybe I get a little bit of plus side on that so but thank you for that and uh, I'm not sending him an invitation online I hope you mean I'm talking. I'm not talking about Nicolas Cage here. So I'm talking about Neil Breen, and I'm never sending Neil Breen an invitation. I will. I will secretly invite Neil Breen to this. He's uninvited. Oh, He's always invited. He could just show up. He is a um, like he'll open the Discord and just start talking to us on here. If he does that, he's fine. He's welcome. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, Neil Breen's AI. He he, he hears us. Whenever whenever God. someone speaks in his name, he hears us. So now he's Voldemort. We have to say he who will not be named. No, when you say that, he's still alone. He's better than Voldemort. He's in our head. He knows everything about us. Does he see you when you're sleeping? Yes. Does he know when you're awake? Yeah. Does he know if you've been bad or good? So be good for goodness sake. Oh. But if you're good, then you're bad because he's no green and nothing makes sense. And I think that's where we're going to call it for today. Is Nothing makes sense. Neil Breen is in the TV. We're all going to die because of Neil Breen. 
A I A I.
DBDFP double down, 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 down.